Pisces, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for September 2018. And Pisces, this month, I think you move so much closer to um, your truth and your alignment. Like, I feel like this month, not only because we've got all of these energies moving forward, including Saturn and Pluto coming out of retrograde, so really a lot of direct and forward moving motion, it really puts you in a position, I think, to be letting go of a lot of stuff or letting go of maybe not even a lot, letting go of significant things that you need to let go of that are not your business anymore so that you can move into this alignment and really work with that. So I'm pretty excited about this month for you. Let's just get in here and talk about it. At the beginning of the month, we've got Mercury, our planet of the mind and communication, moving into Virgo, joining the sun. Now this energy is your opposite. So this is in the seventh house. We will also have a new moon happening here in the seventh house on the ninth. So this is just fresh, clean slate, new start energy. Plant these seeds of intention for what you want in relationships. It is a really delicious partnership energy. And when I say partnership, I don't just mean romance, right? I'm talking about partnerships like, you know, have you gotten a new job and now you're coming into a partnership there? Do you have a new business partner, right? Of course it can be romance, but whatever it is, it's going to be relationships that are conscious chosen relationships to include the new relationship that you have of you with you, right? Now, one of the things that I keep thinking of for you, Pisces, is because this is in a very meticulous, very health conscious, very hygienically clean kind of energy of Virgo, some of the questions you may be asking yourself at this time are, am I at a specific point right now where I honest to goodness feel healthy enough to be in a relationship, especially a romantic one, right? Or is this particular relationship with the job, with the whatever, healthy for me, right? So there could be a lot of questions like that coming up and only you and your heart and your alignment know what is exactly right. Now on the sixth, we've got Saturn, that big old maturing, big daddy energy coming direct and out of retrograde. And this will be in your 11th house. Now Saturn is still a heavy maturing energy. So as he's coming direct, he is coming into a trine energy, which is a useful pocket of energy for you. But what he's saying is, um, Pisces, I need you to be mature. I need you to see the truth. You've got to get a tribe. You've got to have a tribe of people behind you. And you've got to have a tribe of people who have similar ideas. You've got to be in the socials. Even if you wish to be a more quiet energy, that's fine. You've got to have a social tribe that can get behind you. you got to have some friends, right? So where is your friendship zone? What is that looking at right now? Are you aligned with a tribe that is going to um, have your best interest at heart? And if not, is it time for you to be branching out? This could also be something in the socials. I just feel like Pisces, maybe over the last retrograde seasons, the last four months, you've been doing a lot of escaping, maybe some hiding, maybe some not being as public as you could be. And now you're seeing that it's okay to be a lot more public, which I love for you. Okay. Now, again, on the ninth, we've got that new moon happening in Virgo. So lighting up the seventh house, but also on the same day, we've got Venus, our smallest benefic planet, joining Jupiter, our biggest benefic planet in the sign of Scorpio, a fellow water energy in the ninth house. Love that. Love that. Love that. This is an expansive energy. This is a magnetic energy. I told you, you've got to get yourself out there. This is the energy to help you get out there because in the ninth house, first of all, it's the house of faith, right? I got I to gotta believe that something bigger than me has probably got my back or that I'm going to be okay if I make some different decisions. I've got to have some faith to actually stand on, right, to get out there. But this is where you could be publishing, broadcasting, putting that resume out there, starting that new job and showing off your skills skills, um, traveling, showing off that you can speak another language, maybe even studying a language. You could be going through trainings, getting higher education under your belt, certifications, licensing. Any of these things are definitely happening in this ninth house energy for you and they are supported with benefits. So this is all to your greatest good. Now on the 11th, we've got Mars moving into Aquarius. This is again going to light up this 12th house space for you, which here's the thing. Mars being out of retrograde is phenomenal because we get to move forward, right? This is a yes, let's move this forward, let's get going kind of energy. But he's in Aquarius and he's in the 12th house. The 12th house, the nature of the 12th house is a very 
watery energy and Mars is trying to run through water which is not something he's super comfortable with he can't move as fast so you may feel like your forward motion is a lot slower maybe even a little bit quieter it's the 12th house so maybe you feel like the things you're working on are behind the scene you haven't had this great leap out with like yes I'm here in the world and here's my whole project maybe only we get to see a piece of you come out a piece at a time Pisces is right pieces Pisces <laughs> that could be remember Reese's pieces that's what I just thought of anyway so this may not be as dramatic of an energy but where I do think that you can look at it is are you having some spiritual experiences here right are you working on something behind the scenes are you uncovering some things about yourself about a project about your faith about your spirituality this is where Mars can really help you out here and Aquarian energy is good at doing it different and I tell you what Pisces if you didn't know this you cannot think yourself into a different life you have to just take actions and it will change your thinking and then your life will get different okay so that's the pattern of how it works but you can sit and think about something all you want and it is not going to produce a different result you've got to be in the action so i think that's what this energy helps you with now i do have two days i want to put on your radar for you okay the 17th and the 18th of this month and that is because mars and uranus are going to be coming into a square and this is a warring combative disruptive energy okay Mars over here in your 12th house, so quiet, secret, behind the scenes, spiritual, very creative, an energy you're likely pretty comfortable with, right? And Uranus over here in your third house, your mind and your spirit may be whapping into each other. Your communication, your study, you're trying to get the details around something. It could be coming into collision. You could also have someone outside of yourself challenging your thinking and your belief structure. And if they are doing that, it is not not going to feel good but they're probably trying to help you grow they're probably trying to help you find these nuggets back there because that's what a square does right a square puts us under so much pressure that we have to take an action to explode out like a jack-in-the-box right a square is a crisis energy that demands action so that's definitely something that could be coming up for you now I'm going to tell you your job here is not to res respond by losing your tacos and going crazy and making enemies and making yourself look silly, right? You don't need to do any of that, but you do need to respond in a different way than maybe you ever have before. Be creative, be innovative, be inventive, be intuitive. If someone is challenging you, take in what they're saying, be quick to see where people are pointing out things about you that are right. It doesn't mean that everything they're saying is absolutely right, but look at what they're saying that may be right that you can take and use to build from the truth, right? You know, because here's the thing, when somebody tells you something that's the truth and you're growing and you're trying to have this spiritual awakening, the first thing the truth is gonna do is piss you off. The second thing it's gonna do is set you free. Okay, so be willing during this energy, which actually goes till the 28th, but I think this is the height of it between the 17th and 18th. Be willing to see what that looks like, okay? Now, on the 22nd, we've got the sun moving into Libra, and we begin the autumn equinox. Look, another fresh start. We change season. In Western astrology, we follow the seasons, not the constellations. So this is a big energy for us. This is an exciting time, right? The trees are about to show us what it means when you let go of things, how beautiful it is, right? So that's you. That's me. That's all of us. Now, on the 24th, we've got a full moon happening in Aries. The full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So a shift is going to come here to your second house. Now, this is the house of value and of finances and material possessions. This energy has a heavy Saturn influence to it, so it's very grounded and very actually um, mature here. So one of the things I actually was thinking of for you, Pisces, is yes, in some cases, a full moon in the second house can mean that your finances dry up for four weeks. It really can. So that will depend on your chart and your experience. But the other thing I was thinking of is, Pisces, you might be taking a different job or using your talents differently where it produces less income than you were making before, but you're happier, right? It's almost like the absolute perfect needed um, shift that you needed because Chiron is also present 
at this particular full moon and this takes you back to childhood maybe you're going back to doing something from childhood that you always wanted to do or that you felt called to and it doesn't pay you the big bucks yet you've still got to figure out how to make that happen or maybe you're releasing some ideas from childhood that you don't need you know Pisces in some cases because we're talking about Chiron energy maybe you've had parents or siblings or people who are very close to you pass on and you're starting to navigate the world without them right so it could be just a whole plethora of different situations but what is happening at this full moon is that your self-esteem your value structure and your money are going to definitely take a shift in some way shape or form but it's very positive okay now on the 30th we've got Pluto coming direct and out of retrograde in the sign of Capricorn as well this is also in the 11th house now what Pluto says is he's like all right Pisces look here's the deal the old version of you needs to die off so that the new version can live because the old version doesn't have the equipment, the maturity, the spiritual fitness, the awareness to do what your life is going to require now going forward, right? And this is in your 11th house. You may need to relook at your friendship zone. Who are you running with? How are you showing up? Who's in your tribe? If you don't have a tribe, you might have to get one. This also includes, I think, you know, where are you at in the socials? Pisces, if you're not hip to the social media thing, I get it, but you may need to be. So you, you may need to take a look at that, get something really good, professional, good looking up on, on the socials as well. So please keep me posted, Pisces, on what's happening for you this month, your experiences. I look forward to hearing from you guys in the description and comment section, uh, the comment section, not the description section, in the comment section down below below okay like this video comment share subscribe thank you so much for spending some time with me this month and i will see you next month all right bye